Yes, perfect. Yep. Good. So uh, I'm Kalle Svensson. Uh, I work as a uh, software developer at Sensect, mostly in uh, C++ in the vision area. But uh, I don't do much uh, image processing. It's mostly uh, tying all these uh, image processing components together into some coherent working uh, thing that can process images at speed. Uh, I've been at the Synergy for two years, roughly. Uh, they were all, we were also using a lot of CUDA, which is uh, C++ for GPUs. Uh, so that's something. So uh, why are we presenting uh, about Basel at the C++ meetup? Uh, it is because it's really good at building a uh, large scale C++ and it has good support for building uh, mul multiple architectures at the same time. Uh, so a question to the audience, how many have experience with Basel? I can't see the chat, so you have to tell me, Anna. Yes, I am facilitating. Yeah, I yeah. was muted. So we get some positives here, uh, quite a lot, uh, I would say. Uh, only one no so far, or a couple of no's. Okay. But, yeah, quite a lot of people have uh, worked with it or experienced it. Yeah, uh, I saw a lot of uh, Sensac names in the chat, so mm. I guess uh, <laughs> it can <laughs> yeah. cause of that. Uh, and also, this will not be a basal tutorial. It's more about things that I find interesting with basal or different from other build system I have used. So, we have a comment that somebody has used CMake, uh, but not Basel. OK, yeah. I will refer to CMake here and there in the presentation, because uh, it is kind of the default build system for C++ as of now. Uh, so Basel. Uh, is a build system from uh, Google. Uh, they open sourced it in 2015, and uh, it's kind of a, a variant of what they use internally. There is called Blaze, but uh, they couldn't. Uh, it was it, two common names, so they couldn't uh, use it without getting into legal trouble. So this shows an anagram instead. And uh, besides uh, C++, it has built-in uh, support for Java and Python. And uh, but it can support other uh, language uh, languages as well, without uh, actually having to modify Basel itself. And uh, beside building, it can also uh, uh, run and run tests and executables. So, uh, and it has built-in support for caching both of builds and uh, tests. Build cache is perhaps obvious. Obvious, uh, it's like a distributed. C cache, but it can cache anything, not just compiler output. And uh, test cache means that a test will not be run again if the input hasn't changed. So if your unit test binary hasn't changed since the last successful test, it will not be rerun or if you have a 
test binary and some extra data and none of these have changed, the test will not be rerun either. It will just use the, the last uh, successful uh, run. And uh, remote execution means both having can support for build farms, but also to run uh, tests on different platform straight from your laptop, which can be kind of convenient. And here, polygot means mixing languages. So if you have a Python script that uh, loads a C++ library, a SO file, uh, just typing in basil run, and then you the path to your Python target. It will uh, compile the C++ library and then start Python. So it's very convenient in that way. And what I find interesting about Basel, besides all the nice thing with caching and remote execution and stuff, is that it has a uh, rich object model that you can use to uh, creating your own uh, rules for different languages and also do other things besides building. And uh, we use uh, Basel at Sensact. Uh, we uh, have almost replaced the old build system that consists of uh, CMake with uh, some Python scripting on top. And uh, Sensact has a uh, large monorepo with all our code. Previously, it was several uh, repos, but uh, it was too difficult to do the integration. So we switched to a monorepo, and here Basil really excels. And uh, we chose Basil because of the mostly because of the built-in remote caching and the multi-platform build support. So a, a delivery at Sensac uh, is typically a tarball that contains several different architectures, uh, code built for several different architectures and uh, OSS. So it's, uh, it's good to have that built in into the build system and not having to uh, bolt it on yourself. So when you are building in Basel, you use kind of uh, declarative uh, high-level objects, like uh, here's a C++ binary, here's a C++ library, similar to what you do in a CMake list in CMake. Uh, but the language is different. It's It looks like Python, uh, but it's... Uh, more of a subset of Python called Starlark. And here is a uh, build file, as they are called. Here we defined a uh, small uh, C++ library called mylib. It contains a bunch of files. And here we define a C++ binary or executable called myexec, uh, and the binary uh, depends on the library, and this is how you declare a dependency. And here is one example for, of uh, large-scale C++ support, namely that you can have internal headers in uh, for a library, for example, without uh, 
having to put them in uh, s specific folders like you have to do in CMake. Also, here is the external header that is used by the C++ binary below. And if we compile and run it, uh, we do a basal run, my exe, and it will uh, build it and also run it. And then you can change something and you can do basal run my exe again and it will uh, recompile and build, run. So it's very convenient for fast uh, iterations during development. You can also do uh, basal tests and have my tests as well. So what is happening under the surface here? Uh, my library will return to structs with information that the CC binary can consume. Uh, returns is not, is not a really good word. Uh, they're more like attached to the target name. And uh, these structs are called providers. And uh, these providers can uh, make information flow between the edges in the dependency tree. And the, for CC library, it's uh, the default info that is just dumb files. Uh, and you can see it will create both. It can, the CC library can create both a static library and a dynamic library. Uh, unless you tell the CC library to choose one of them. And here is also some structured information about the C++ library. Uh, the CC info provider doesn't really look like this, but uh, in principle, it does. And uh, how can uh, these abstractions be used? Can I just uh, pop up a question, Kelle? Yeah, sure. Not really sure how to how to read this one though. Uh, should be my lib HPP, no? Uh, yeah, HPP, you're right. External, the external header should be my lib HPP. My bad. And uh, for example, uh, if you are into Rust and want to use Basil, you can download the ready made Rust rules and uh, since look at the old one here, there were no, uh, there was just CC library and CC binary. They are built in to the, into Basel. That's why it's very convenient to uh, just call them. But since Rust is an external thing, you have to uh, load it into your build file and uh, here we still have the cc library and uh, we are creating a, a rust binary called hello world with one source file and it also depends on our c++ library here and all of this is completely external to basil it's written in uh, the Starlark language. And you can also do other things than building. Uh, 
you can create a tarball with different built artifacts. So uh, it's the same here. Creating tarballs are not part of the basil uh, basil itself, so it has to be loaded. And uh, here we create definition for my tarball. It should be gzipped. And uh, here we just have uh, our own uh, mylib and my exe as uh, sources through, through tarball. And uh, since uh, A CC library can create both uh, .8 file and .so files. This tarball will have uh, three files in it, the executable and the two libraries. And uh, if we take uh, this example, uh, uh, to do this in CMake, and if uh, we have different uh, builds of my library for different platforms, then you have to uh, create the CMake project twice in two different build folders, and then have this packaging uh, externally in Python or what you have. Inside Basel, thanks to this composability, you can also, you can do it inside and uh, so that's very convenient. And uh, tool chains are providers too. And here in Basel, a tool chain is a C++ tool chain contains the path of the compiler and uh, whether it can find the header files and also what flags you want to use. So, for example, uh, for CUDA, the GPU C++, it can uh, actually be run both on uh, on a CPU and and or uh, GPU. And uh, CUDA makes use of some markup there called host and device, where device is the GPU to tell its compiler what to do. Uh, and at Sensec, we have our, created our own uh, CUDA rule sets, just like uh, the Rust ones. And uh, when you are building with, with the CUDA compiler, when it's building the host uh, object files, it will use your normal uh, host compiler. But since we are building CUDA on uh, for different architectures and OSS, the CUDA toolchain can't make any assumptions about uh, the C++ compiler. But it can uh, ask for the currently resolved C++ compiler and ask it, suppose I want to compile this file, what flags would you use then? And it will get them back and uh, we can send them into the CUDA compiler. Uh, and uh, now I'm actually out of slides. So you can ask question either on what I have presented or on Basel in general. Maybe I can ask you, Kalle, so uh, yeah. why, why do you like working with Basel? Uh, it's, uh, it has a kind of clear object model. If you take, I don't know, I'm crapping a lot of CMake here, but it's kind of, it has evolved and it tried to be compatible with several different build system. 
and uh, let it generate code for. And it's makes it really clunky, to speak. Uh, and uh, the thing, the way you can do uh, build for several architectures at the same time is really, really convenient. So if you have like an edge in the dependency tree, you can uh, tell Basil that on this edge, you can, uh, you should build for this architecture instead. And it, and it will basically will do it. So you don't have to have these multiple uh, instance stations of CMake and multiple builds. So uh, it's really, really convenient and understandable. Cool. Uh, some questions popped here in the chat also, so I'm just going to read them for you. Cool yep. stuff is asking, are there any good EDE support in, for example, Qt, Creator, Visual Studio, C Lion, Xcode, or similar? Uh, I use VS Code, and there is some support. Uh, so you can uh, click on target and build build a target. Uh, it could be better. Sometimes you want to. To jump to definition, but it doesn't work. But uh, th there are some. And what was the thing that you said you were using? VS Code. VS Code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So some plugin. Then uh, I go further with Andreas. He says, last time I checked, using internal H from main CPP was still possible and not enforced by the Basel sandboxing. Do you know yeah. whether this is intentional? I think it's intentional. Uh, it's is described in the documentation that it's how it works. So it should be like that way. All right. But, uh, yeah. Then Andreas is also asking addition additional to Gustav's question. What EDE do you use? I had some problems with the stability of the C Lion plugin. Okay, uh, I use VS Code, so uh, I don't know much about the C Lion. Okay. Then uh, a question from Lizard. In practice, how portable is Base? So, does it work OOB on exotic? OCES platforms, two chains, etc. Uh, yeah, uh, it. I guess you mean the. He compilers. meant OOTB. He wrote then. OOTB. Uh, you kind of you uh, you can define your own tool chain definitions, and uh, since we are in a safety critical business, we create our own toolchain definitions with the, exactly the right flags and everything. And uh, as long as your compiler is reasonably similar to GCC or something, uh, and don't make have too many weird, uh, like it's a compiler, it's a linker, and they take certain flags, I think you can use whatever. Can you hear me now, by the way? Yep. Okay, my headphones died. Sorry. Uh, right. Have you had any issues with Basel and flaky tests, example, involving hardware, is asking Oliver. Mm, no, not that I am aware of. No? No. And does Base also support distributed builds now? Yes, it does. Uh, you can uh, install uh, Build Farm is one of the open source ones on how many computers you want and uh, the remote building. Okay. Uh, Gustav is writing to build 
for several architectures, do you need to be able to build all locally or can you buy running base or build on Windows and build for Linux and Mac? Yes, you can do that uh, with remote building. And uh, the example in uh, the Basel documentation is that you uh, want to build uh, an iOS app and you are on Linux. So uh, you have to uh, remote build on a Mac for a, a different target than a Mac. So uh, it's quite possible. Okay. Then Andreas, regarding portability, from my experience, Windows support used to be not that great, but it's getting there over time. It was a comment rather than a yeah. question. Yes, I, I heard that too. We don't use Windows, <laughs> so I don't know, really. And then Gustav is saying, for a personal project, would you still use Basel if only targeting a single architecture or a small project? Yeah, uh, I would. Uh, what you need to build your small project is what I've shown you, uh, that small uh, snippet. And Basil uh, will automatically find your local compiler and configure itself for it. So uh, it's, it's quite good for that too. Cool. Then I think this was all of the questions in, in the chat. And then somebody else wants to jump in and ask. David, do you have questions yourself? No. Uh, nice presentation, Kalle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, now another question came. How broad is the support for the equivalent of find modules in CMake? Uh, yeah, that is one of Basil's uh, weak points. External dependencies are uh, a bit cumbersome. To get all this uh, caching and remote building going, you have to uh, describe for Basil in very, very detailed what uh, files it's supposed to use uh, with this uh, CC library or CC binary or whatever. It's not sufficient to just have a lib folder and use uh, dash L foo. You must really tell it. So it, uh, it's a bit cumbersome. Okay, but there are, uh, yeah, yeah, but there are a lot of other ready-made things you can download for Basel. So it's not as good as, as spread as CMake, but uh, it's getting there. Thank you very much, Kalle. Great presentation.